Let's take a look at the alkenes hand down. Looking at the alkenes hand out on page four. No, that's the right one, page, whoops. Oh, what happened here? Well, something up. Well, that's what, here's a new option here. You don't need notes in here, do you? Or you do. Maybe you should transfer your notes and then throw that out. instructor likes you to know the solvent, so you should know that the solvent for that first step is usually THF. And it shows how this is a sin uh, addition. And in the handout, I gave a little bit more about the mechanism. So in the handout, we showed how um, I mentioned that actually the boron here is likely to actually go on to attack two more alkenes before you can get to the oxidation step. But that doesn't really have very interesting consequences. That's usually not important. And then I also actually showed the full mechanism of the oxidation. And if you look at that, you'll see it's actually kind of complicated. And like I said, the OH group ultimately didn't come from the hydroxide. Ultimately, the OH group came from uh, the peroxide. You actually, uh, you should know that mechanism. You might just be asked to draw that mechanism. So you should go through it. H how do you go through it? You just keep drawing it and then checking it. Uh, just a complicated mechanism. If you keep drawing it and then checking it, eventually you'll know it. But I wouldn't actually go through that whole mechanism unless you were specifically asked. The only parts of the mechanism that are helpful for the products are what we have on the board. So this is what's most important. They also have that whole mechanism in the second language book. Stereochemistry, we get two cis addition products, although maybe I should have said syn addition. Two syn addition, and I gave the reason. And then regiochemistry is very important, that it's anti-Markovnikov. And then synthetic utility, this is useful for putting an alcohol with the OH on the less substituted carbon, and you can compare that with sulfuric acid and water, which puts the OH on the more substituted carbon. So there's a lot of important stuff there. So let's do a synthesis problem. We have to say, step by step, what are the reagents that we would have to add to get from the starting material to this product? The um, sulfuric acid and water. And suppose we wanted to get this product, what would we add? How do you say the BH3 again? Boring? Boring. But I, 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 most people just say BH3 okay. probably. BH3 and then THI. So let's actually write down what the answer would be for this step.
So what's your answer? And then, oh, oops, and then that. Uh, Okay, good. For a second there, maybe you forgot the second step. But if we hadn't done the second step, we would have ended up with a boron here instead of the OH, mm -hmm. which we didn't want. So we have to remember this. You remember that we have to number these steps. You have to number these steps. What is the significance of numbering them? It means that this is a separate step. First you add the boron and you wait for that reaction to finish before you add the hydrogen peroxide. So it's mandatory to put in the number one and the number two over if here. If you add it, just if you, if you ignore the boron and you just add the hydrogen peroxide and the... Uh, and the hydroxide, hydroxide to this? Yeah. It wouldn't give the same as that, right? It wouldn't, it wouldn't be the top one? Yeah, I don't know what the heck would happen there. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what would happen if you just added hydroxide to this. Well, let's see. This is a nucleophile and this is also a nucleophile. So I would expect no reaction. Nucleophiles don't usually react with other nucleophiles uh, over here. So my prediction might be uh, no reaction there. In any case, you certainly wouldn't get what we want. What we want. Mm -hmm. So you haven't learned any reactions, I don't think, where you just add these directly. Unless I'm mistaken. All right. Yeah, anyway, so. you can see basically you just got to memorize these reagents. You just have to make a flashcard and memorize these reagents because uh, well, they're not obvious. You just have to memorize that these are the reagents for the second step, just like you have to memorize the solvent for the first step, or even the BH3. So at this point, you should definitely be making a big library of flashcards for the key reactions, because this just comes with drill. Uh, it's important, remember, it's not good enough to be able to figure out the reaction after 30 seconds. The reactions have to be obvious to you just when you look at them, so you can do a bunch of reactions in a row, and that comes with practice. Why are we getting the enantiomer here? Well, because remember, there's really two syn addition products. The OH could come in from in front or from behind. By the way, why is the methyl group ending up on the dash here? Well, if the OH comes in from... Um, the, the H needs to be on the Because there's really the H over here. That's right. So a lot of people get confused. A lot of people say, well, gee, this doesn't look like syn addition because you've got a wedge and a dash. Mm -hmm. The second language book talks about this. This, is, this doesn't look like syn addition because we have a wedge and a dash, but it's the hydrogen that should be sin to the group over here. So it helps to draw in the hidden hydrogen. All right, and we would also would have gotten the enantiomer, an enantiomer here. So this is a good example of how you have to choose from your toolkit when you're doing synthesis problems. Good. Let's do this synthesis problem. What are the reagents we have to add to go from this starting material to this product? Let's review that a bit. Now, did you, are you planning to do an E1 or an E2 here? An E1. Oh, yeah, you 
usually, not always, but usually E2 is probably best for syntheses. So you want to use your tert-butyl oxide. Now, the problem with the way you drew the tert-butyl oxide is you put an H here. But remember, the point is we want this to be a strong base. Well, a strong base should have a negative charge, not a hydrogen. So we shouldn't put a hydrogen on this oxygen over here. We don't want tert-butyl alcohol, we want tert-butyl oxide. 